I like to sing, dance, pretend, and I like to have fun, 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 So, like, I think about that fun, fun, fun song all the time, you know, because I just love it. Right. But uh, I've been thinking more about, uh, lately about what's going on in that next song. Like, ooh, so wow. Yeah. Like, what is that, man? <clears throat> like, well, what is your guess that that person is singing about? Uh, it sounds to me like some kind of, like, singing prayer, but in, in a language that I don't understand. Singing or, prayer? A singing kind of prayer. I thought it was like a recipe for, like, um, maybe maybe some type of Indian crack. Okay. Because, like, uh, I bet if you followed those directions completely, you would have delicious Indian curry crack. flavored crack. Yeah. The, yeah. That, nice. that's, that's my gut instinct. Um, because, you know, I'm usually right about everything. Sure. And this seems like it's accurate to me. Hey, uh, I'm Jake Belcher. And You're... I'm. What? What? Who are you? I'm Brant Thoman. Oh, well, thank you for interrupting me, Brant Thoman. I Thelman. apologize. How long have we been doing this for? Usually it's one, then the other, and then the. No, I mean, it's, it's, it, we're two minutes in, right? Uh, something like that. Okay, great. So we haven't ruined the entire show yet. Not yet. Okay. We still have 48 minutes to fuck up. <sighs> Thank God, man, because, like, I'm going to mess a bunch of things up today. I can just tell. Like uh, That, that, that kind of day, huh? Uh, Yeah. Like, uh, okay, I, I pick you up at right. 445. Right. I was asleep at 429. Right. Like, was, uh, my cat jumped up on my bed and, like, startled the bed. And I'm like, what the fuck? Can't get off, man. And I looked over the clock, and I'm like, holy shit, I should have left, like, uh, 10 minutes ago. Right. So, like, my whole thing's just been ketchup, 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 ketchup. Mine started off the same way. I, I was watching some TV in the living room, and started. To, there's no AC in the house, so I started to doze off in this wonderful, warm California weather. Yeah. And, like, opened my eyes and looked at the clock. I was like, oh, shit, I got to get moving. And I uh, grabbed my stuff, and out the door I went. Uh, so. Well, I'm glad you made it, man. Yes. Because if I had to wait for you, I would have just driven right past. I know. You know, like, I know. And make you take the bus the rest of the, the way. The whole way. And then, like, you may not even have made it. And I could have done this whole show myself. I could have come out here and be like, oh, pro wrestling crate. What's going to be inside you today? And just, like, um, ignore that we had, like, important things set up at the top of the show where we're going to talk about our political feelings. And, um, we were. That's what we talked about on the way down, right? But I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I got uh, gifts and things in the mail. So uh -huh. I have to see, like, what, what I got, you know. So this is this is the new pro wrestling crate. I don't crate. know what it is, man. But this is pro wrestling crate. I don't know, but we know is, that. this is mine now. Splash for Fitty. Yeah, you don't have that. I have it. It's yes. mine, and I'm going to wear it every day. Sleeveless as it is. Yeah. Oh, man. I, this is like my least favorite item in the world, and I can't believe I finally own one now. I don't know what it says on it. Please, just, just be like a victory finger. Don't be anything dickish, okay? Okay, great. Oh, shit. <laughs> the Boston Crabs. So we're actually going to go to like a party on yes, Saturday. Yes, we got it. We got our fantasy bunch of foot Boston people. Fantasy football draft. This is perfect for. This will be perfect for me. This is a wonderful, wonderful victory thing. I, <laughs> I did not ever expect to own this. Like this is a momentous day for me. As they me. are Pats and Red Sox fans, Gosh, it I is love perfect. It, man. it is yeah. perfect for it. Yeah, this this is wonderful. Actually, like, the only we way could end the show like my week is one. Only way it could be better if it was actually a middle finger. Mm -mm. See, I don't, I don't like the vulgar finger. Like that's that's what they started selling lately. Like Guns N' Roses concert, they sell the big foam finger. middle finger. You do, man. I hate that. I hate that. I mean, I, I say we can cancel the show, but we have guests and stuff on today's show. We're going to be talking about. Buses. And I'm, you know what? I'm surprised you actually don't own like the uh, Trojans victory. I used to uh, foam fingers. I yeah, I thought to. you did. Yeah, I thought you did. And, so. and that one's somewhat reasonable to me, but these other things suck. Right. Um, I got a um, a thing of mints. Who is on the front? Is that a Mr. Socko Mint? Mr. Socko Mint. Yeah, this is garbage. So he's just, he's just going to run the gambit with the Mr. Socko thing. A um, sweet chin music coaster? Patch? I don't even know what the fuck is, this is, thing is. Is that, a, is it a patch or is it a coaster? They're calling it a vinyl coaster. A vinyl a coaster. A vinyl coaster. Um, a, uh, a sticker, a decal. It looks like shit. And, Can we um, see what this? It says it's an evolution, elbow-lution decal. 
Um, in the light, you can see that it is a guy. It is a monkey that then turns into a man climbing up a ladder and then le then throwing an elbow on top of a guy sitting on a table, lying on a table. Uh, and then this is the uh, last thing they have in there: a a poster that says "Out of Nowhere." It's um, this is a terrible thing. So this is the third month in a row. Okay, right. so here's what happened. We we showed you guys the previous two ones of these. This is a Mick Mick Foley owned company. Right. And he still jammed his own things in here. I said if it didn't get better, I'm gonna cancel it. Pro Wrestling Crate, consider yourself motherfucking canceled. Like uh, I'm done. Is the Boston? I wouldn't even take a free one in the mail anymore. Like, is the Boston Crab shit. a finisher? I, I I guess yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a finisher in wrestling. It must be the number one finisher. Okay, and what was the what was the t shirt again then? The, uh, dude, I don't know. I guess some other a four fifty splash, like a guy who jumps off the top rope and, right, and right. lands on his belly or something. The but yeah, the Boston Crab is like uh Oh, uh, okay, there it is. Basically, it's a way of like tricking a guy into shoving a finger up your butthole. I mean, it, it, it it's not a fun game or event. Like, I, I'm so out of, out of three crates, you've gotten one thing that is. And moder it's only, and it's moderately only, useful. But to real life, this is shit. Yes. Yeah, so what I want this for? If I wasn't going to that party with a bunch of fucking assholes, um, just people from Boston, you're all assholes. Um, but a bunch of fucking people from uh, a terrible place, like there'd be no value to this thing at all. This is garbage. Like I, I should. It's I a should, cheap bone finger too. Right, it, it's it's terrible. I, I can't fit my whole hand in it. I can barely get I can four barely, fingers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. God, I had a girlfriend like that once, but it was just like um, <laughs> it just uh. She wasn't worth twenty dollars a month either. That's what I'm saying. Right. Twenty dollars for this. I mean, I appreciate the person who got who got it for me, um, but this is shit. If there was an on-air trash can, I throw it in the garbage right now. That's but as instead, close as we can come. But instead, I got that. Not okay. Bad. Look, we'll rip through this one too because we can't do two segments where we open these damn things. Right. But this is a good one. This is we've so we've gotten you've gotten good stuff out of this one better, before better better stuff you know absolutely come on everyone's been better than these the that the was PW that crate. was absolute shit okay so this is um powered geek box yeah they are like the big rival to um loot crate so and this is all uh really truly geek related stuff gosh I, I hope it's not that bad but oh, yeah we'll see I kind of dig the the design on the box the Pac Man and the and the like on there here, here, here's what we got we have got. A sticker that says, "I love Harley Quinn." Okay. Oh, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait! We're gonna put her on your shoulders. All right. You beautiful brat. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, what else we got? We've got a Suicide Squad uh, collectioneer. Open that up and see who's in there. Sure, sure. Uh, we've got. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, a, a Joker. Um, that actually is cool. You actually got a decent character. Yeah. Not like some third rate. Like, some like, obscure. Like last week we got, yeah, got uh, uh, Jim Gordon. Yeah, it's not like some terrible obscure character. No this is. Uh, I have no idea which character this is. Oh, I'm gonna give this to my brother. I know he'll like this. What is it? It is a. World of Warcraft Murloc. Oh, that is kind of cool. Yeah, I can, uh, I, I this is you got you got Diablo as your little micro character. I don't know who that is. But Neither is, do he, I. is he good? I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. Okay, well I don't know if he's good or not. Uh, what else we got in here? Uh, this seems like an air freshener, a uh, Batman uh, air freshener with like the Joker on it. I mean that's kind of cool. Double Jokered up, not bad. Yeah, I mean if you're um, if you got like a stinky place and you don't know about like Febreze or something, stinky car. This thing's wonderful. Stinky car. Wonderful. Uh, a deck of uh, playing cards. Batman villain playing cards. We may have to peruse through it later. Yeah. See so what villains are in there. Who who makes up their their uh, their Jack Queen and King? This is a you know it's an interesting box. Okay, and, and rounding it shirt. out, of course, the shirt. shirt you know. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Okay, I actually think I will wear this shirt. That's actually this is not a bad shirt. No. So th this this company was worth it. Power Geek Box, you win. Um, Russell Crate, uh, big time loser. I'll see you in hell, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, look, probably not in hell, but um, you know, maybe purgatory. Sure. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for right now. Uh, so Power Geek Box, uh, you are this week's a number one super crate power. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, on the other side, we're going to talk about um, buses, mm -hmm. public transportation, trains. Is there a difference between the two of them? Sure. And we'll tell you like why we're going to do it with our uh, two guests, um, Katja and uh, Scott. Scott. So we'll give you their last names on the other side because, you know, goddamn stoners don't remember shit. Yeah, we're going to go to break, I think. So, 
Um, we have to set up another microphone and make this all official and stuff. Sure. Uh, do, do, you, do you like any of this stuff? Do you want any of this stuff? I don't see anything there. that I, I want to look at the, at the cards. I, at the very least, I want to look through them. Yeah, okay. And see what they're like. Okay, then you can have those cards in because I have no uh, interest in them. Okay. Um, yeah, but I want this guy to too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, we'll figure it all out. We're going to go to break. And um, we're going to come back and all the stuff will be put away and we'll be all like serious. And, um, Do we have to be? Gosh, you know, contractually, I think we're supposed to be. I didn't know we were under contract to be oh, serious. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's no fucking contract. So eat shit. Bye-bye, man. <laughs> And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically no, naughty. I'm never politically correct. I'm Dr. Dr. Drew, hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> but only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. if someone like, you know, is a little too groping might be inappropriate. But I like the flirting. Well, and stuff. When I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your no! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. Did you know that 67% of American women are size 14 and above? You mean they look like this? Yeah, girl. So then where are we in television and film? And where are we in fashion magazines and clothing stores? Yeah. So we want to help out entertainment and fashion and media. Catch, Catch the, the F, F up. up. Watch us on Plus This live. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. on Zena TV. Hi, I'm Hanny from Lady Pants, and you're watching the top 10 women who are killing it in comedy. Congratulations, number nine, Kristen Wiig. If Kristen Wiig's rise to deserve stardom has taught us anything, it's how a proud parent must feel when watching their kids shit in the toilet for the first time. In the eight years since joining the cast of SNL, she has managed to earn two Emmy nominations, write, produce, and star in one of the highest grossing female-led comedies of all time, and star in five $150 million movies in one year. Everybody wants her and she never disappoints. She's gorgeous but awkward and has the perfect balance of bringing all of herself to every role, yet simultaneously immersing herself completely in the character. She was still playing characters named Tuck Shop Employee when she was 33, relatively dead by Hollywood standards. And at the ripe old age of 43, she is a heroine to us all. Only a few more to go. Keep watching. Jason Stewart here for Zena TV. On the show Absolutely Jason Stewart every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Big guests, everyone from the gayest to gay to the straightest to straight. David, uh, what was his name? He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten. Yeah, man, I decided uh, that uh, I hadn't, I, I, I hadn't, um, I kind of swept through that other shirt. Yeah. So, like, it was time to have this one. No sweat stains on this one yet, but we'll check at the end. It's see a good how looking goes. shirt. It really is. Oh, thank you. Yeah, man, I like that shirt. Thank you. I, uh, I picked it out uh, over the, the break. Yes. And decided that it'd be a wonderful way of presenting. Decided to go with that instead of the 450 splash. <laughs> I'm never going to wear that. I'm not going to wear a single thing from that company. That company's terrible. I don't even want to give Russell Crate any more credit for like existing than um, I right. had before. So don't get Russell Crate. Like, uh, you cannot order them at russellcrate.com. 
All right, uh, I'm Jake Belcher. I'm Brant Thoman. We're back here on Zinna.tv, the name that shall stand the test of time. It has so far. It has so far, man. Are you still like longer? Are than you I from did. the future? Do you know things don't work out? No, that's okay, why. Great. That's why I'm happy that it has so far. Thank you. I mean, you have you have said you have you've made that statement that declarative it looks, that this is what's going to happen. Yes. The test of time. The test of time. It shall stand. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. You know, six eight weeks in. Gonna it's, it's still around. We're still I think doing it's it. It's a little longer than that. We might be at nine. Okay. We might be at nine. You know? Sure. No, we I, we've actually done a lot of shows, man. Believe it or not. I believe it. Yeah, yeah, me too. It just feels like it's only been eight. Yeah. Well, time flies when we're messing around with nonsense. Yes. Especially wrestle crates. Yeah, man. The, 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 the wrestlecrate dot com will never be mentioned on our show again. Like this is their last hurrah. Yeah. They've uh, they they've we four fifty splashed them right out of the put them in the box right out of uh, out of the ring that is. Uh, Grand Theft Audio. Yeah, so sayonara, WrestleCrate.com. No more business for you from us. No one's going to learn about you, WrestleCrate.com, from us. Like, we are not going to tell anybody about it anymore. Not WrestleCrate.com. Not at Russell, <laughs> Grand Theft, WrestleCrate.com. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just implement the name of the company into our the title of the show. Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we said on the other side that you're going to learn so much about buses and trains and like uh, you're, you're gonna feel like you've gone back and like really gone and gotten like uh, education on this stuff, because we have two very well informed guests about the transit system and how it all goes around. Yes, the wonderful LA Metro system. I I, I bet if we push and ask, I bet their knowledge expands even beyond that. Some quite possibly. I mean, I'm like, because there's some there's some other things that are around here like. The foothill transit system, the and dashes the, and the yeah, dots, and, and how the, those all match up with the LAMTA. Yeah. So, it's um, it's a confusing situation sure. for a lot of people, and they're here to help us all make sense of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we have Scott Schultz and uh, Katja Duft. Hey, welcome! Hi. Thank you for having us. How you guys doing? Good, good. So, um, I bet that was the most professional introduction that either one of you have ever gotten. <laughs> well, you know. It didn't ramble at all or nothing. What do you uh, expect following uh, you know, pro wrestling sure. you know, gift packages? Sure. I mean, that's uh, an intimidating lead-in. Yeah. Like when you go to bed tonight and you think to yourself, oh, my rival was a box. You know who <laughs> used the Boston Crab? Rick the Model Martell. Uh, yeah, he sure <laughs> did, man. Remember that uh, he had that arrogance cologne yeah. that he would like spray in people's that's face? Right. And the, the, he blinded. Uh, yep. And the old bug spray can. Yeah. <laughs> which like, made no sense. That's how you get them in that maneuver. Yeah. You spray them with poisonous cologne. I can't see anything now. Yeah. On a similar note, I hate to. Okay, I'm gonna take, we'll do this and we'll go right back to buses. Uh, <laughs> sad passing in the wrestling world this week. Um, Mr. Fuji died. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, Mr. Fuji oh, was this racist guy who yeah. would throw salt in wrestlers' yeah. eyes. Racist. Same idea as Stereotypically spring. racist. Okay, but honestly, is there a stereotype about, like, Asian people throwing salt in your eyes? Yes. <laughs> there uh, is? Yeah, it was okay. a Japanese, uh, you know, character popularized during World War II. Whoa, I did not know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. very racist. No, well, I did not. But, yeah. but, but where did they pull that from? Like, there has to be, you well, know, this, like. The, the whole salt throwing comes from the whole sumo wrestling thing. There's, oh. there's salt that is tossed. It's, 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 it's a cleansing kind of thing before you actually, I mean, those guys, I, I, when I lived in Japan, you'd get to watch it on, on Japanese television, and there were times where these guys would go three to four times where they would get lined up, and then the referee would stop them, and they would have to go over and get some salt, and they'd have to toss it out, then reset themselves. It's like, what? I don't understand this. Let's just see the two fat guys go at it. I want to see somebody get shoved out of that little ring. I think they probably do that to, like, delay it for commercial breaks. Maybe. Well, you know, pro wrestling back in the days uh, in the 60s and 70s was based on a lot of xenophobia and stereotypes. Sure. And so yeah. That way they could, you it, know, then it moved push into a lot of all American, all American. They guy. had that wonderful, like, homophobic section, like, in the late 90s. Like, yeah. uh, boy, they, they were really made a lot of money. They loved too. that, yeah. Sure. Hey, hello, Katja. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Good. Is this, um, are, are, are we um, messing around too much? No, that's okay. I just don't know much about wrestling. So oh, that's okay. Uh, uh, y your accent sounds like it's from Pasadena. <laughs> <laughs> no? From Russia. Oh, Russia? Russia. Did, did they have wrestling on television in Russia? They do, yeah. yeah. Were yeah, there, like, big stars? Greek Roman wrestling is very popular, I believe, and mm -hmm. Russians are really good at it. Is there any... Oh, like, like the traditional, actual, like, wrestling. Really? Yeah, not like not, the, not the sports Olympic entertainment. No, 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 it's an Olympic sport. The Olympic know? version of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would figure we, because we have a, a lot of rich Russian tradition of wrestlers in America. Like they're they're all terrible people who like um, <laughs> Nikolai Volkov. Yeah. So like, 
even though like I, I, th- I think you're probably a safe and like good person, you know, I have a little trepidation uh, about Russian people because oh, of yeah. because of wrestling. So like, if I see you like go for like a top uh, off the top rope elbow, <laughs> I'm gonna be ready for you. We we, we specifically hid the uh, the steel chairs away so that you couldn't grab them and hit us oh, over the head good. with them. Hey, I told you don't even <laughs> mention it. Like I didn't want her to know that they were here. You know. Okay, hey guys, um, buses. Yeah. So is is this kind of like also the randomness of like the bus world, like um, ran- talking to random people about random things? Every time I, t- I take a lot of buses, Brent takes a lot of buses. all the time. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, busted uh, our show, busted true stories about getting around LA, told by people who don't drive. Uh, it's stories that take place, true stories that take place on buses, trains, bicycles, just sidewalks, mm-hmm. getting around the city. Uh, in fact, I've seen professional wrestlers on the bus before mm-hmm. i've definitely seen luchadors mm-hmm. uh, on the right. bus yeah. you can spot them because they're wearing masks and we film a uh, uh a webcast twice a month in boyle heights so uh you definitely see a little bit of that element there sometimes when you're taking the bus to east la and, b- and both of you got here via the metro transit system today yes. oh yes. sure half Wanted. my stories take place on the number four bus right outside here. oh really okay very active bus it's a uh, you know a uh, nice uh you know uh petri dish of uh stories Absolutely. sure <laughs> i've been on that bus th- mm-hmm. a few times because i would take it to work here like uh, and there's a lot of uh, trannies on that bus like uh, that, that's always an interesting um thing it, it is a a a cross-section of every type of person because you have the people who got like the dui and like mm-hmm. now they can't drive for a certain amount of time and otherwise <laughs> They're a perfectly fine, normal person. But now they have to, in their <laughs> mind, degrade themselves for an hour. You can just tell it irks on their soul, you know? Like, um, Well, I, there's I, a I, lot of people at the show, they wear riding the bus like a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. they, they do like riding the bus. The city is transitioning to a more green culture, which is why you're seeing stories about the uh, exposition line opening all the way to the beach, yep. which is amazing. Yep. Opens the, up the beach the to the gold South line, and East all, LA. getting all the way out to APU now. Yep. Yeah, which is and uh, uh, soon that might even reach out your way uh, up in the foothills. Oh, uh, oh really? Are they I'm going to fight that. Would you? Yes. Okay. I mean, that is. I've, always, I've, always, I've always I've always was surprised that the Gold Line didn't have like an extension that went off into like the Glendale Burbank studio area because well, it just could have just continued to follow along the 134 very easily. They did just open up the orange uh, a second orange line that connects from uh, the North Hollywood Station to uh, Pasadena through Burbank the 501. and Glendale. I've, I've ridden the 501 multiple times. And that I is love a great that bus. bus. Okay, hold on. I'm a little uh, upset by this whole orange line thing, actually. <laughs> it's how not a I, train line. How come every right. other like, line, colored line, is a train? But like orange, they trick you. It's a fucking bus. Why don't they just call it like, um, you know, the 501? Like every yeah. other bus has a name like that or it has a number like that. So I think that they're trying to sound like fancy and stuff. Well, it's a dedicated line, too. They have their own separate road. Uh, which is oh, they really do? neat. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's some quicker. value to that. There's yeah. oh, some absolutely. value to that. The 501 is a wonderful bus because I've, I've ridden it all the way. Is that how you make them. it over there to Glendale so quick? Yep. Man, yep. how does he make it there so fast? Yeah, like, I, I, I'll pick it up in Pasadena and just got it off at Gooden Brand right there. It's it's a nice quick ride, and and uh, uh, and I've, I've taken it all the way to North Hollywood. I and mean, it, it really it, it takes 45 minutes. It's faster. Yeah. Th- it's faster than the than the alternative, which our our rail lines are pretty nice. I yeah. love I love riding the Gold Line. Mm-hmm. The red line can be a little yeah. sketchy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, not a little, a lot sketchy at times. Um, sure. Last time I was on there, I saw a guy who was wearing uh, plastic bags for clothing that he'd also decided to fill with poop as like a uh, a smell defense or something oh. to keep people away from him. So there's a lot of lunacy that happens on those buses. Uh, okay, Katya, gotcha. how how did you get into the bus system and? You know. Okay, I moved from Russia yeah. 13 years ago, and I actually never had a need to drive in Russia because we have an awesome, excellent rail and uh, bus system in Moscow and in smaller towns. And, like, less places to go, right? To communism for that. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so when I moved here, I, I got my license, but it was too much for me right away because, you know, people drive aggressively. Sure. <laughs> people are stressed out. Sure. No parking. Sure. No drinking. Sure. So to everything's way too strict. Too many conditions to park. You know, uh, very easy to get tickets. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this. So, but when I started <coughs> taking a bus in LA, the system was much worse. I, w- I think I started around 2003, 
And actually, that's when this huge strike took place. Remember that strike? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I actually almost gave up. I was like, oh, no, I just started taking a bus and suddenly it's on strike. How am I going to get places? Those were the days when I was walking about 15 miles a day. Just Whoa. I didn't have a car, but I needed to be places. Mm -hmm. So I walked a lot. So I was in a great I was in great shape. But then better. I mean, with the time, it all got better, and now we have all these new metro lines. So now I really enjoy it. Back then, it was a bit challenging, but it's improving, and it's improved so much lately. So, yeah, I love it. So you guys uh, are down involved in, like, a storytelling-type scene where you tell stories from these types of events. Yeah, we've uh, sold out uh, the Comedy Central stage twice in uh, April and July. We'll be back there probably in the fall or the winter. We do a show uh, for the last three years at Stories LA Books Cafe uh, on the fourth Sunday of every month. Uh, we usually fill the patio there. We do a whole bunch of festivals. We're going to be... Uh, at the New Urbanism Film Festival in October. Uh, we're going to Cal Poly Pomona to headline the Alternative Transportation Conference in November. We have this great community of storytellers. We book uh, Moth Grand Slam winners. We book comedians. Uh, we book actor writers. We also book ordinary people. Uh, I book people before that I met on the street, uh, that I met on the bus, that yeah, I- Yeah, I'm sure you hear a story on there and you're like, just, cause every day you ride the bus, you have to hear people who are like, oh yeah, I got this going on, that going on, and you're like, oh yeah, let's get this guy on stage to tell the well, story. no, you see what's going on. I mean, you ride a bus and it's interactive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have a job and you work in an office with a bunch of people who ride the bus, you hear stories in the break room. Uh, when you ride the bus, one of the things about our show is that we're all the same. You know, that's one of the things that you discover when you're uh, forced randomly to sit with 30 or 40 other Los Angelinos uh, with their agendas and you're in a closed container for 20 to 20 minutes to an hour to get to where you're going you discover everybody is the same when you see the stories at our show people in the audience recognize ah. the stories ahead of time yeah. and but you follow it to see how it goes but we're all the same and that's what makes our show really unique and probably the most uh, Los Angeles specific storytelling show of mm -hmm. all the storytelling shows in the city and LA has a fantastic storytelling culture. Yeah, that's true. Can you give me the full title of it again? It's called Busted True Stories About Getting Around LA Told by People Who Don't Drive and we also have our uh, web show uh, twice a month on the first and third Friday at 9 p.m. on Dromebox.com called Busted Los Angeles. I like that the idea of from people who don't drive are on there because mm -hmm. it is a different type of person. <coughs> like, yeah. um, I have a friend. I won't mention his name. His name is Carl Kozlowski, but I'm not going to say it. He's been on our <laughs> show before. And he <laughs> is the worst non-driver maybe in L.A. He doesn't understand the terrible things that he asks people to do for him. Like, he won't move a block over to, like, a place where, like, traffic is reasonable. He always has to be in the most congested place to be picked up. He always has to invite you to a place that has absolutely no parking. Yeah. Like, because he, because that doesn't exist in his world. There's right. no idea of, like, well, where do people park Well, cars, I, I get know? off the bus right here, and it's right here. This is where I want you to meet me. It's like, so, uh, like, look, if you ride a bus for, like, predominant, like, the way you get around, you got to, like, look into, like, what type of problems you're putting your driving friends yeah. into. Cause oh, I was downtown once in front of the courthouse. Someone pulled up to me and said, excuse me, how do I get to Century City? And I don't drive. So I said, uh... Follow this road till you get to Olympic Boulevard, take a right, and just keep going until sure. you reach Century City. Sure. So I gave him like a two hour. <laughs> you, 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 you can just give him like, follow the 480 or like whatever, yeah. like bus yeah. number yeah. makes it down there. Exactly. That, that's a good way for someone to give directions like that. Uh, I don't know the freeway. <laughs> yeah, sure. So just tell him which bus goes there. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to go to a, uh, our uh, second break. Uh, we kind of goofed around a little bit on that one. Can you guys give us any like story? snippets or parts or like sure. uh, on the uh, in our next segment you yeah because i, I want some little uh bite-sized radio uh all right you know, i mean uh, I think it'd be a few size. minutes you know like we're not gonna kick you out the door and like say stop your story this has gone too long <laughs> no, i've had that happen when, uh, when i go up for bands oh sometimes. really yeah, oh, yeah when sure. bands uh, have uh, oh, uh technical difficulties yeah. and i jump up and once i hear the guitar plug back in like <clears throat> Go, sure. you done? They're sure. like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. awesome. And I go, to find out more, go to www.bustedlosangeles.com. No. And bring that, the band that works for us, too. So, uh, yeah, find out more at uh, www.bustedlosangeles.com. All right. Uh, we'll be back on the other side. Uh, so enjoy this commercial break and uh, maybe get a sandwich or something. But, like, a sandwich is not too complicated to make because it's only two minutes. I mean, it's mustard and mayo only, guys.
Oh, we oh, all ain't no shit. I'm Money B, and you can kiss my ass. Let me swallow my snot. <laughs> that's that's sexy. Keep up the good work, mild met. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Let me see how I'm coming. Check out. No, I love you. Oh yeah, why no cyclocyanabin. The little. Woo! You take one. There you go. Always switching up. Always switching up. What was that? My wedding band jumped out. My oh my god! I hope it's an omen. Call my wife. He keeps moving away. Hi, I'm Rob Schneider, and you're watching T Hollywood V. Z Hollywood T. Bang. A bang, a bang. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Hi, I'm Rob Schneider. This is Slink Johnson, a.k.a. Black Jesus, B.K.A. Godzilla Lungs. Hello, I'm Aaron Roberts. Yo, yeah, what's up? This is Craig Wayans. Hi, this is Brad Williams. Hi, I'm Martha Madison. What's good? It's your boy Marcus Falker, and you're watching Z. Z Hollywood TV. A hot nothing. We out here. That's what we talking about. Absolutely nothing. A Thursdays, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. A hot nothing on Z Hollywood TV. That was perfect. I like mine. I like mine. I like mine. <laughs> <laughs> The wheels on the bus go. Um, <laughs> sure, or they like uh, they they break down uh, broken down buses. Have you guys been on buses when they break down? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's always fun. <clears throat> that is the instant angriest group of people. Like, oh yeah, n- no one is happy that like I gotta be at work, motherfucker. I have one for you guys. When you see your bus coming and it isn't one of the nice and new ones, yeah. are you like inside just a little disappointed? Well, I hate, especially when you get like the the old, the ones that are like multiple generations behind. Is like, <laughs> dude, should this thing even be running anymore? Didn't you, did. you donate this to some third world country so they could have a bus system? You know when that happens to me a lot is coming <clears throat> home from shows in uh, Echo Park or, or Silver Lake. So I go to a lot of the right. uh, shows at the Echo, and uh, and what happens is uh, you have the choice of the two or the four. You know because they both run down uh, Sunset Boulevard, mm-hmm. and I have to go down to Miracle Mile, so I have to cross anyhow. And so me, I don't care what bus I get on as long right. as I can get home. But one of my friends who I go to shows with, uh, he is very particular. Uh, and so he doesn't get on the four, like, ever. And uh, he's, like, all about the two bus. But, I mean, they're that, both That's weird, man. Buses. There's, like, that type of allegiance to things. If they, oh, if they yeah. both get you to the same place, it's like, who gives a... Well, no, there, there was a point there where I, when, before the 180 and the 181 started getting some of the nicer buses, <clears throat> I was seeing some of the other locals in Pasadena. They were driving all these nice new buses with air conditioners that worked awesome. It's just like... Yeah, it's when, suburb buses. When, when the hell is the 180 going to improve? And then when yeah. you start to see them, you're just like, oh, good, it's a new bus. It's not one of the shit ones oh, that we it, were getting. You go to Culver City or uh, <coughs> take the Blue Bus or the Foothills, you're going to get nicer buses than mm-hmm. you're going to get in Los Angeles. Those oh, Foothill yeah, buses the, are the, nice. the Foothill Area Rapid Transit, the yeah. park buses. Yeah. Uh, nice. th- beautiful, because they have the high, high backs. You can actually lean back in them, the extra wow. leg room, real nice, except for they wow. just don't run on time. Yeah. I, I or is late. Yeah, that, that, that 187 is just the worst. I mean, L.A., we're blessed that we at least have a 24-7 bus system. I mean, that's great, 24-7, 365. I mean, if you need to get from one side of town to the other, mm-hmm. you can always catch a bus. I think the buses are more reasonable now with Uber because, like, yeah. you can just take your bus to kind of where you want to be then Uber from closer to get yourself home. Like, Sure. Um, <laughs> n- now it's been a reasonable thing to me, but I spent 12 years riding the bus without driving at all, and I, 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 if I had to go back to that lifestyle, I, I really don't know what I would do. Like, Yeah. Uh, I, I, the freedom of, um, you know, in the middle of your work day, going and getting a sandwich someplace that is, you know, not walking distance from the office or, like, those sure. things uh, would, dr- would drive me crazy to go back to. All right, so we got some um, storytellers here. 
So I think we should be ready for some storyteller action. Would one of you like to uh, go first? Uh, here, I'll give you a rapid fire story. Great, great. Uh, a lot of time when you ride the bus, um, you know, sometimes the drivers, they're a uh, little bit um, uh, inebriated sometimes. The or, drivers? Uh, yeah, you know, it's tough. It's not everybody's meant to be driving all the time. And uh, the thing that gives it away is the microphones because they always, you know, kind of start talking into it. They can't resist it, or some can't. And so that's usually what I look for for red flags. So one time I'm riding on the two bus, which is uh, Sunset, and we're approaching Highland Ave, and uh, the bus driver gets on the microphone. He goes, next stop, Sunset and Highland. Exit in the rear. Sunset and Highland. <laughs> Sunset and Highland. On a Saturday night. All right. It was a Wednesday afternoon, so Hilarious. I just <laughs> popped off. I'm like, I'll, I'll walk from here. Yeah, that's it's good. It's good. Uh, I, I've, I've also had the drunk bus driver. It is terrifying, man. Yeah, um, it can be. Yeah. Although I do like the ones that uh, there's one that, that rides that drives the 260 in Pasadena that heads north on Fair Oaks. That he will actually he'll promote the going it's like don't forget to buy your lottery tickets the mega millions at 248 million dollars <laughs> while the supers at seven and the power balls at 26 and you're just like all right it's wow. like oh, yeah it's it, he he loves just chatting you up on the ride up with with this it's it becomes entertaining and, and this is not yeah. one of the drunk ones like you were dealing yeah. with this is not an inebriated he's just i've got a microphone in front of me and i'm gonna have some fun with the people on the bus with me so. you know it's funny they used to have bus tv for a while uh True. where it was mm -hmm. like some little pre-recorded network and they would show stories and because they're on five minute loops the uh, bus drivers would get sick of them and they have the option of turning the volume off mm -hmm. so they don't hear the same story over and over again for an eight hour shift mm -hmm. and uh, there was that story where ebola like someone on the 33 bus like i got ebola and like ran out in pico union <laughs> obviously he didn't have ebola because you know it was pico union sure. and uh, but uh, the story made the news cycle and they put it on bus tv <laughs> And the volume was down. And so <laughs> it says Ebola scare on the bus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the orange bus line. You don't hear any of the thing like, oh, and it turns out he was a crazy guy who jumped out in Pico sure. Union. Uh, you just see Ebola scare on the bus. And that's like, and now it's the music man. <laughs> oh, and, uh, but those are bus tales. No, TV, actually Transit TV was fun because it was kind of educational. They used to have these trivia questions. Some yeah. of you know you could learn something. Uh, one time I traveled with uh, two teenagers on the bus and the trivia question was what is the oldest wind instrument? So they looked at each other and said my ass and laughed. Ah, that's Specifically yours? No, no, no. Looked at each other and said oh. my ass. So at the same okay. time? Yes, they wow. had a similar sense oh. of humor. <laughs> sure. But I mean, that was kind of a, you know, that was silly, but you could also learn some good stuff. But also what happens to me a lot, I always run into people who try to avoid paying 175. Sure. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's, that's Courtesy the fair ride. Right, right now. Courtesy right, yes. That's just, I'm so lucky. And people come up with all kinds of excuses. The best ones, one day this guy was, he ran into the bus and he tells the driver, look, driver, I really need to get home. I need to do laundry. That's why I need my quarters so I can't pay. I need to go to an interview tonight. So I need to go in my clothes clean. So please, can I can I use the courtesy ride? I'm an actor. I actually have like an audition, an interview. And the driver is like, you're the worst actor ever. How many times <laughs> you told this story before? Hilarious. <laughs> so he didn't let him. He said, no, no, I don't want you on my bus. You're like a bad liar. And this one time, it was also very, like, sophisticated. The man gets in, and he's like, driver, driver, only have, like, um, five cents, ten cents, like, once, and, like, pennies. Can you please get them out of my hand? And actually put them inside the machine. And the driver is like, this is not my job. And the guy is like, I forgot I left my glasses at home, so I don't see the coins. I don't know how much it is in my hand. And he's like, also, I have mild eczema. And so <laughs> other, other people can't help me. So because they don't wear gloves, and you, driver, you wear gloves, can you pick the coins out of my hand and uh. pay for me? 
And the driver's like, oh my God, what a bunch of excuses. <laughs> just go, just go, please, just sit down. You talk too much. I don't want to deal with you. <sighs> Have you guys come upon the ones that actually put signs up in their buses? There was one th just the other day where this woman had put up the sign saying, kids from this age to this age, this is how much your bus ride is. A, a seniors that's this much at this time and this much that like she had taped it up she had wow. written it out yeah, yeah. and put it up it was on one of the buses that had like those some of them had those doors with the glass partition that yeah. kind of protects them which mm. i don't get but she had it plastered right there because she was tired of answering questions yeah. tired yeah. of giving free rides you know they you get those the, those are the worst the, those drivers i mean the ones that entertain you are great the ones yeah. that are polite are great it's the ones that just they're just so fed up with being in that seat for so many yeah. hours yeah. every single day and having to listen to the bullshit yeah. that you Answer have to listen to. Answer the same to. question. Yeah. <coughs> every the, single time. The only sign I've ever seen on the front of a bus was uh, on the front rail. There's, you know, there's a, that one flat uh, spot there, and it just said, please do not place your bags or babies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good, good recommendation. Yeah, you know, because uh, you know you don't want your baby flying out sure. the uh, side of the door. It's like three feet high. Oh, mm. uh, so do we have a story from uh, you? Oh yeah. Um, well, uh, to add more to fair eva evasion, Great. Great. this one guy jumps on the bus and shaking little paper in his hands, and he's like, "I'm not paying. I'm not paying. I was just released from a mental hospital." And the driver is like, okay, okay, please, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is uncomfortable. And I don't know what was really written in that paper, but he looked insane, like totally insane. And uh, there were also two older Russian ladies on the bus looking very refined, dressed up, very cultured, talking about classical music. But he kept screaming and jumping from seat to seat. So at some point they got super annoyed at him. And the other people in the bus were like, oh, shit what if he has a gun what if he's going to like strangle me or something but those two russian ladies you don't you know you don't joke around with them <laughs> at some point you know how each bus has a back door as well and you can get out through the back sure. door <laughs> so at some point i think they just looked at each other and were like that's enough and he was standing right in front of the back door so they jumped up grabbed him kicked him out of the bus threw him out of the bus and the rest of the bus got up and like applauded and said oh <laughs> wow russian ladies you're cool and they were like mm -hmm. oh <laughs> pleasure oh pleasure sat back down kept talking about classical music i was like that's amazing amazing you couldn't expect that from them because they were kind of sure. tiny frail ladies but i guess that's the only way you have to fight this kind of not crime but bad behavior even the driver said ladies I <laughs> good job russian ladies yeah. okay so are are you is there another project you're involved with also uh i have a facebook blog yes. called tales from the bus and yes. that in fact that's how me and scott got in touch with each other because one of my readers saw an article in la times right? la weekly la weekly about busted and he said oh do you know this guy who runs uh, a monthly show where people actually show up and talk about buses and i said no i don't and he's like we should go so we went so how do people find it again what's it called uh the, the blog yeah mm -hmm. tales from the bus tales from the bus uh, on facebook all yeah. right um we're, we're getting the hard break we have to go to our last commercial break of the uh okay. show so um but uh, people have a chance to find that there and, and this busted los angeles.com or you could go to youtube.com forward slash c forward slash busted los angeles we have over 100 videos up there all right yeah. uh we're gonna come back on the other side and we're gonna talk about a couple of the most important news stories of the week and wrap ourselves up and out of here so um come back in uh, two minutes guys all right Bye. Minnie from Lady Pants, and you are watching the top 10 women who are killing it in comedy right now. Ready for number two? Cameron Esposito. God damn, this girl is not afraid to say what she thinks. She's built an entire career out of it. She gets mad. Mad at injustices, mad at hypocrisies, mad at just idiots that don't know how to drive right. And she turns all of her mad into poignant and well thought out, hilarious social commentary. You actually feel smarter after laughing your ass off during one of her stand-up sets. She's also a lesbian and a damn fine one too, if I may say so myself. Her hair is always shaved and lopsided and perfectly coiffed, and her style game is strong. It doesn't hurt that she's Latina as well. Cameron, keep doing what you're doing, girl. It's working. Ooh. 
Let's watch number three. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Hi, I'm Rob Schneider. Hi, I'm Martha Madison. Oh, hello, I'm Eric Roberts. Hi, this is Brad Williams. And you're watching Z. Z Hollywood TV. I just saw the countdown that went five, four, three, two, one. My very favorite sequence of numbers that goes from five to one. First place. We're back here on Grand Theft Audio. This is Jake Belcher. And I'm Brant Thelman. Still joined in studio with Scott Schultz. Katja Duft. All right. Uh, hey, so we don't have much time left in the show. We only have like uh, four minutes or something. So I don't even know if we're going to get to multiple news stories. I just want to say that uh, sad week. You yeah. know, um, you know, we talked about uh, the passing of uh, Mr. Fuji, but mm-hmm. also uh, we we lost uh, Gene Wilder. This Gene week. Wilder. Oh yeah. And uh, such talent, I, I really, um, you know, everyone is is sad at this loss. Mm-hmm. Um, even though he hasn't done anything like in a long time, you know, um, it still hurts <coughs> when somebody that you like that much, uh, you know, moves on to. You this. got a favorite movie of his? Uh, I I do. Do you? Yes, I do. Of what, course. What, what is yours? <clears throat> Mine has always been uh, uh, Young Frankenstein. Oh, Mine sure. too. Yeah. I sure. mean, uh, there there are so many. Blazing Saddles is spectacular, but there was something about Young Frankenstein the first time I saw it that just like this guy is so very funny. Yeah. I mean, functional insanity. <clears throat> absolutely, and and such a great ensemble cast with it that you just uh, yeah. uh, 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 was Peter O'Toole was that was that Andy got was? laid. Yeah, oh, yeah. So it's functional insanity, but he also got you know uh, Terry Gar. Yeah. So you know yes. it showed like you could be functionally insane and get laid. Uh, how about you, Katja? Do you uh, do, have you seen much uh, Gene Wilder? Uh, yeah, m- I like Blazing Saddles. Oh, I sure. just rewatched it this year with uh, actually the director being there. Oh, so cool, yeah. cool. Really oh, Mel Brooks. Yeah, there was a, they were just I was reading something on Facebook about his interview in regards to Gene Wilder and what he did to with in regards to you know making that movie. He's what what. Uh, Mel Brooks considers still considers to be one of the funniest movies ever made. Sure, so. all, all that stuff. Uh, obviously, <laughs> the Richard Pryor movies, uh, Silver Streak, yep. and um, what was the one? The one was Blind and one was Deaf. Do you remember uh, which one that was? Hear No Evil, See No Evil. Yes, great, yes. Great movie. Thank you. Uh, but my favorite <coughs> movie of his was The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes' Younger Brother. Uh, the, uh, the Adventure of Sherlock Holmes's uh, younger brother. Have you ever seen it? Yes. No. So yes. good. I think it's the best. It it's is probably the best. If you've yeah. never seen it, you have a treat waiting for cool. you. Cool. Looking like, forward um, to it. It's uh, absolutely wonderful. Did he have crazy hair in it? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, good. He, it's, it's rare that he had, like, you know, <laughs> normal combed <laughs> right. hair. Um, but he was a, a, a like a genius at what he did. Absolutely. And, um, An iconic comedian in so many different ways. Super sad to uh, see him, you know, go on. Uh, that basically takes us to the end of our show, guys. Uh, one more time, where can people learn more about uh, you and your show? BustedLosAngeles.com and uh, YouTube.com forward slash uh, C forward slash Busted Los Angeles. All right, uh, Katja? Uh, Tales from the Bus on Facebook and Tales from LA Bus on Twitter. Uh, do you have any uh, live shows coming up? Fourth Saturday of every month. Uh, I mean, fourth Sunday of every month at 5 p.m. at Stories LA Books Cafe. Next one is September 25th. And on October 9th, we're going to be in Culver City as part of the New Urbanism Film Festival. All right. Oh, very cool. Uh, come, come on out, guys. Uh, Brent, uh, you have anything you, uh, you, know, you <coughs> need to pimp seconds? out? No, I don't sure. think so. But uh, I know you always do. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I want to say that we uh, produced a great show this week uh, out at the Whiskey. That's we did an right. uh, awesome um, uh Pink Floyd Night at Ultimate Jam Night Live at the Whiskey. You can go to Zena.tv to watch more of it. Uh, pretty dope. Uh, as for this week, it's uh, Labor Day weekend coming up. Right. So um, it's uh, the beginning of our fantasy football draft. I'm sure we'll talk about the season as we go <laughs> Hell on. Hell yeah. We'll have to find some way of um, proving ultimate championship victories. Sure. In the year. 
so uh, that basically takes us to the end of it. Uh, as always, I ask you, please go check out jakeshow.com, and that way you can see what's going on. Uh, I have a few extra things I'm going to put up this weekend. I have a couple of uh, sideshows. I think I'm going to do a talk show from my pool on Saturday, so we'll see how that goes, work out the new Mevo camera. Right on. Uh, that takes us to the end of the show. So, um, you know, if you're watching us live here on Zinner.tv, stick around for the top of the hour for an episode of Drum Smack yep. and Suicide Girls later on tonight. So. And we'll be back next Tuesday for sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, well, no, we won't be men. We won't be? No. We're, black, we're dark here too? Well, you know, it's Wednesday. You're right, you're not here on Tuesday. It's next Tuesday that we're not here because we're not going to be someplace else. So, <laughs> right, next Wednesday. We will be here. Yeah, that's right. So we'll be, we will be here then uh, with more guests and stuff like that. So I think we might have Carl joining us next week. So oh, goody. Maybe we'll get to um, defend himself in his terrible smells. All right. Uh, love you guys. Um, you know, in that type of jazz. I think we just lost our signal. I wonder if we're out. Who Maybe. Knows? I'm going to say we're probably over, man. Oh, wait. wait, wait, wait oh, there, there it is. Go. There we go, guys. Oh, look at you. Ha, 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 ha.